we're going to go ahead and move on to our next story. Now, it's funny because I'm in America. We have listeners all over the world. And I don't know how much of the news got out uh, from America to the rest of the world. But we've had a big controversy the past couple of years of tearing down statues of Confederate leaders and Confederate generals. I guess that's the same thing as leader. But they're tearing down these statues because they say it's a monument to hate it's a reminder of racism it's it's a really interesting topic politically and socially because it's a part of history i get i see both sides it's a part of history and you don't want to forget history and it really smacks of like 1984 and the taliban blowing up the statues of the buddhists blowing up the statues of buddha in Afghanistan, it's this real thing about like destroying the past, renaming streets and schools and things like that. It's really odd. On the other hand, I get the idea that in certain parts of the country, we have these schools and streets and statues named after people who, one, not only tried to break America apart, but also were trying to uphold the institution of slavery. So I get both sides. And it's not a particular issue that is divided strictly among race either. There are a lot of black people who are like, oh, no, I'm cool with that statue. I don't have a problem with it. My, you know, I've lived in this area my entire life. My grandpa lived here. It's whatever. It's a statue. And then you have white people going, no, no, you have to destroy it. So it's, it's, it's kind of a weird, very interesting issue. For the most part, they do get taken down. Once people start complaining, they're just like, ah, take it down. That is nothing. That is nothing compared to the brown dog affair. So we're going to travel to England, jolly old England, as I like to refer to it in my show notes. And what we're going to look at is this horrific story. It's pretty sad. So back in 1902 at the uh, University College London, there was a laboratory and they were doing a lot of vivisection. So that's where he basically... You cut the dog open. I think vivisection is where you cut the dog open while it's still alive, and dissection is where you cut something open after it's dead. And there's medical reasons to do both, obviously. But you, they were, they had this little brown puppy, this little brown terrier. Skip ahead, skip ahead, guys. If you're sensitive to dog stuff, I'm I'm not going to get into too much detail, but I don't know how long this is going to run. Maybe ten minutes. Once you start hearing me talk about demonic clowns and and all that stuff, you know you're in the right place. But so they had this little brown terrier, and they said, "Okay, you know this is for medical reasons. We're going to do this." They did a vivisection. They took out its pancreas and then sewed it back up. And they're like testing, doing testing, things like that. And it was still alive. Like they took the pancreas out and then they kept it alive. Then what they did later on was they go, okay, you know, now it's time for the next part of the test. We are going, now it's 1903, so it's a year later. They have a lecture hall with all these medical students standing there. And again, I'm not going to get into the details here, but they did another, they opened the animal back up, did some more stuff in there. It gets real graphic, but I'm not going to talk about that. Closed it back up, gave it to another researcher, and that researcher performed another procedure in the same room, you know, like, oh, here, I'm done with it, here you go, and the other guy did another thing, and then the they go, okay, well, they gave it to a third doctor, and he stabbed it in the neck and killed it. Now, in that audience was two women who were actually undercover. They were anti-vivisectionists. So there was a group of people, like we have PETA now. These people, because it was a big issue back then, a lot of vivisections were going on, and there were special laws. Uh, One of the laws was that you could not perform more than two procedures on the same animal, which is interesting. And the other one was the dog had to be properly anesthetized. You need to be given enough anesthesia. And so they reported it. They left the uh, left the lecture hall totally grossed out and basically reported it and wrote a book on it and contacted a lawyer, law enforcement and, and got a lawyer and all that stuff. And they said, you know, the, the doctor was like, no, it was properly anesthetized. We, you know, you don't have to worry about that. But they did break the law on doing the two procedures. And it was this big brouhaha back in England, because it really gave the anti-vivisectionists something to hold on to. It gave them this item. They're able to hold this dog up and say, this is the horrible things that are going on. So now we're going to move ahead to 1906. 
And near the school, they erect, the anti-vivisectionists erect a huge statue of a brown dog. Big metalwork statue. And it says on the plaque, In memory of the brown terrier dog done to death in the laboratories of University College in February 1903. After having endured vivisection extending over more than two months, and having been handed over from one vivisector to another till death came to his release. Also in memory of the 232 dogs vivisected at the same place during the year 1902. Men and women of England, how long shall these things be? So this statue stood there as this monument of what happened. And the scientists were like, you guys are so superstitious. This creature doesn't have any soul. It's just a it's just a thing. You guys are totally trying to put all of like this old world thinking. We're creating a we're creating health. We're doing this so we can help people. And the vivisection anti-vivisectionists were like, you know, it's cruel, it's cruel, it's cruel. And scientists are like, it's not cruel, it's just an animal. What are you gonna do? So this debate raged back and forth, but what happened was you have these young medical students, and you know, they're college students, so they're going to get a little rowdy. They started to try to break the statue down with crowbars. They tried to, like, destroy the statue to the point where they had to start stationing 24 hours a day seven police officers at the statue to prevent people from trying to destroy it. Because of that, because the, the scientists can no longer, like, try to destroy the statue... 1,000 scientists, 1,000 students, medical students, descended upon the statue one day. And at that point, they were met by anti-vivisectionists, by suffragettes, by trade unionists, socialists, and other progressive factions. Riot breaks out. They're battling over this multiple arrests. I think it took, I think I saw it was like 240 police officers had to get involved in the melee. They just, it was this huge fight. And it went on for a couple days from what I could see. There's an interesting quote here. It says, The mainstream press was apparently largely supportive of the medical students, offering up mind-blowing headlines like, Medical Students Gallant Fight with Women. So you had the media going... Uh, the women are just being hysterical, you know, because they ha- it, was, it was a lot of women. You had the suffragettes and the anti-vivisectionists and things like that. And the scientists just wanted to get rid of the statue. And this went on for so long. So th- all of that started in 1906. The statue went up. In 1907, the Brown Dog Riots is what they were called, started. And then in 1910, the council, Battersea Council, which oversaw the park, said, you know what? We're done with this stupid statue. In the middle of the night, they sent four workers and 120 police officers to protect them. They took the statue down, gave it to someone, and it disappeared. They think it was Melton. As of today, there is a new statue. In 1982, a new statue went up in the area. So 80 years later, 70 years later, they put up a new statue with pretty much the same plaque. And it's a picture of a little dog. It's a much smaller statue. Where the old statue used to be, all that's left is like an indentation in the ground. And there's a sign on the fence nearby that says, no dogs. And it's funny to think, like, I imagine a bunch of medical students, I know they weren't wearing, like, white coats and stethoscopes, but just, like, these these college students fighting with suffragettes. And the police, like, oi, 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 break it up, break it up. Don't make me wallop you. And, you know, all just all, like, this craziness over a dog (laughs) statue. And, and you know what's funny, too, is now whenever I see a story about a Confederate statue being taken down, I'm just going to think of a bunch of scientists in white coats riding over a metal dog. And, you know, a bunch of, like, terriers on the other side, like, biting them on the ankles. It's like, you know what they need to do? They need to make... Okay, let me pitch this to you real quick. I don't want this episode to go long, but let me pitch the, to, this to you real quick. Air Bud MD. And MD stands for medical dog. And he Air Bud... After done, he's done playing sports. He got a scholarship to play football in college. He ends up going to medical school and he finds out that the other air buds are in laboratories and they're going to be vivisected and he has to save them. And it's perfect because all the kids who grew up with Air Bud, they're adults now. So it's a little edgy, it's a little like dark retelling of the Air Bud story. You know, like they love doing that. They love taking a normal franchise and giving it a grim, dark feel. Airbud MD. 
and it could be at the ending it'll be like everything you saw in this movie is based on historical events if you'd like to know more please visit your library and it would be you would just be like peeing on scientists and like putting poop down and they'd be like like slipping on it and stuff and then like he's rescuing the air buds that would be awesome Oh, oh, you know, and you can have a scene where Airbud actually, like, ties down a scientist, and he picks up a scalpel, and Airbud goes, hate to cut and run, but, and then, like, all of his guts come out, I'm telling you, million dollar, million dollar idea. That was a clip from our daily podcast, Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime news. If you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from, check the link below. Please like and subscribe. And hit that little bell, too. That does some magical stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.